In this question, we have an unknown substance in contact with water and aluminum. The unknown substance begins initially at a higher temperature and the water and aluminum are at lower temperatures. And we're asked to determine the specific heat of this unknown substance. We've drawn a simple diagram to show us what's going on conceptually. Because the unknown is at a higher temperature, then we know that the heat is going to travel from the unknown to the water and aluminum because they are at lower temperatures. In essence, heat will travel from the warmer substance to the cooler substance. And there's a bit of a conservation of energy going on here. We would say that the amount of heat that is lost by the unknown is going to need to equal the amount of heat that is gained by the water and aluminum. And we can write this out, therefore, in a little bit longer of a fashion. So we'll say that the heat of the unknown is going to equal the heat gained by the water and the heat gained by the aluminum. We've also learned in this chapter that the heat gained or the heat lost by a substance can be expressed according to the following relationship. We know that heat is equal to mass times specific heat times a change in temperature. So we're going to fill that in for each of these heat terms. So for example, for the unknown, we would say that the mass of the unknown multiplied by the specific heat of the unknown, which is what we're looking for, multiplied by the temperature change of the unknown. Now for the temperature change, what we would want to do is express that as the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And those would be the values for the unknown. Over on the other hand, we're going to have something similar. Whoops, we're going to have the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of water and then again multiplied by the temperature change, so final temperature minus initial temperature, and then same thing for the aluminum. For the specific heats of water and aluminum, we're going to need to look those up in a reference table in just a moment. What is important to understand, however, is that the left-hand side of this equation is actually going to be a negative value, and we'll explain why that is in just a moment, whereas the right-hand side is going to equal a positive value. Now, how do we know this? Well, the unknown, because it's beginning at a warmer temperature, is going to cool down, and therefore the final temperature is going to be less than its initial temperature. Look at the structure of the equation. We're subtracting final and initial temperatures. So if you have a final temperature that's smaller than the initial and you go to subtract these values, you're gonna end up with a negative number. On the other hand, the water and aluminum are warming up. They're gaining heat energy. So their final temperatures will be larger than their initial temperatures. And therefore, when we subtract, we would end up with positive results there. So we, of course, cannot set a negative on the left side equal to a positive on the right side. So what we're going to do to alleviate that fact or to uh, you know, make it make mathematical sense is to place a negative sign in front of the left-hand term. Therefore, that negative and the negative that will arise when performing that calculation would cancel and we'd be setting a positive on the left side equal to a positive on the right side. So it might be a little tricky there, but just make sure you put a negative sign right here. We're gonna go ahead and plug in all of the known values here. We have all of the masses, so the unknown mass is given. We have the mass of the water. We have the mass of the aluminum itself. We have all of their initial temperatures and then the final temperature is also given. Notice the final temperature will be the same for all three objects because they are in an equilibrium state. So we'll plug in all the known values and remember we're gonna have to look up these specific heats for water and aluminum. So here we go. So we've plugged in all of the given values. Again, the specific heat of water and the specific heat of the aluminum were looked up in a reference table located in your textbook. Then what you would do is pick up your calculator and bravely type this entire thing in at one time. And when you do that, you're going to get this value. You're going to get 9296.07. Then on the left side, you would multiply the negative 0.125 by this quantity right here. And when you do that, you would get 7.875. This is multiplied by the specific heat of the unknown. If we look at the units, this 7.875 was obtained by multiplying kilograms and degrees Celsius. So you could write kilograms, degrees Celsius right there. This, on the other hand, when we multiplied the kilograms would have canceled out because you had one in the numerator, one in the denominator, and then the degrees Celsius would have canceled out. So it looks like we're left with just joules. 
and then divide both sides of this equation by the 7.875, and when you do that, you will see that the specific heat of the unknown is about 1180. And then because we divided joules by a kilogram degrees Celsius, that would be your unit. And that is indeed the correct answer.